Nathan For You continues its new season on Comedy Central. Nathan Fielder, the comedian who brought you dumb Starbucks and Pig Saves Goat, is back with more outlandish ideas to help real small businesses. This is his most ambitious season yet. You gotta see it to believe it. Nathan For You airs on Comedy Central Thursdays at 10, 9 Central, or anytime on the Comedy Central app. Ha <laughs> Welcome, friends. Oh... I welcome all of you. What a what a pleasure it is to welcome such people that I cannot see into this place we call Spontaneous Nation. Welcome all unseen visitors. Be ye people? Invisible people? There might be invisible people in this room right now. What if <laughs> maybe some invisible guy just had an organ theft and so no one noticed he replaced it with a piano <laughs> what if somebody did discover invisibility right they come up with a potion or a pill what did they what did kevin bacon take in the hollow man was that did he drink it or did he take a pill or was it an injection please don't anyone tell me <laughs> i'm sorry i brought it up and i do not want to know <laughs> but i'm saying First of all, I, I will say this. Coods to the hollow man for, uh, you know, basically laying it all out there. If you're turning invisible, you're going to use it for creepy purposes. You're not just going to be robbing banks and stuff. You're going to be spying on ladies who are getting undressed. That's what people will do with invisibility is spy on people getting undressed. It's gross. But what if someone has discovered a viable invisibility elixir and they're being very chill about it and they're like I don't want to blow this I want to keep spying on people getting undressed so I'm just gonna I'm gonna use it sparingly <laughs> this will be a weekend thing this is not an everyday thing And you know what? I'm going to treat myself to the most attractive people getting undressed. I'm not just going to go to like the Bally's locker room. No offense to Bally's customers, of course. A lot of very attractive Bally's customers. How do I know? Well, I work at Bally's. <laughs> and I spy on the people getting undressed. I'm saying this guy is like, I'm going to buy a map of the stars homes. And of course, it's a man, by the way. <laughs> Did that need to be said? I'm going to buy a map of the stars' homes. And I'm just going to wait all day outside, you know, Charlize Theron's house. I'm not going to break in. I'm going to wait until she opens the door herself. Slip in there real quick. And I'm just going to hang out till she gets undressed. Am I going to spy on her when she goes to the bathroom? No. That is not what I'm into. That's a different thing. Oh, let me tell you something. I got a friend. If if he was invisible, there's not a you. You want to start putting padlocks on your bathroom doors? This guy is a freak. I'm just a normal, everyday invisible dude who just likes to spy on people getting undressed. I, once they're nude, I don't even want to watch anymore. I just like the undressing part. It's normal. And that man's name was Neil deGrasse Tyson. What? It's not even his area of science. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation. With Paul F. Tompkins, I am the second part. What is this show all about, you might ask, if you're still listening to it? Well, let me tell you. I have a chat with a special guest inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. And the, the talk goes here and there, hither and yon. Cl click and clack. Hmm. I don't know how the car talk guys got in there. And then myself and some improviser pals will improvise a story, a narrative story, one long story told over two segments. 
and there's music underneath it. Where's that music come from? Well, I'm glad you asked. It comes from Mr. Evan Schletter. That's him. He ain't nothing but a piano who got struck by lightning and now is alive. <laughs> Why were people moving that piano in the middle of that electrical storm? We'll never know. Because they were also struck by lightning and are dead. Did you know that pianos are an incredible conductor of electricity? <laughs> anyway, it is now time to introduce our special guest. This woman, W-O-M-A-N. <laughs> she is a alumna of the Groundlings. She is an alumna of Saturday Night Live. She is one of my all-time favorites. Say hello to Lorraine Newman. Howdy, everybody. <laughs> oh, howdy. howdy. I, I felt like, like saying howdy. It's fun to say howdy. And I like Hollow Man, too. That's a good one. The Kevin Bacon Invisible Man sure. movie? Sure. I've seen parts of it. I've never seen the whole thing. Yeah. Do you Although, in my mind, I conflated it with that other one he did where in his dreams he, he visited that crime. Remember that one? <laughs> Wait, what? He has dreams and he visits a crime? Yeah, in this house. Oh, God. And I think it's called In Dreams, too. And he sees the, the crime take yeah. place. He sees it play out. Yeah. And is he powerless to intervene? Right, exactly. Okay. And so he like there's a scene where he goes to a friend. He's like... Hey, man, I keep having this dream about this crime. And nobody believes him. It's just <laughs> typical. <laughs> is it a crime that has already taken place or a crime in that is past, going to take place? In the past. Okay. Justice is, for a little girl. Is it a, <laughs> is it a famous unsolved crime in the movie? Um, I can't remember, Paul. I'm, you know, I'm aged. We're all aged. We're aging more and more every day. Yeah. And I bet there's some kids listening to this who are like, not me, I'm young. You're going to be a day older tomorrow, you fucking asshole. And you're going to haunt some guy like Kevin Bacon. I bet you are. I have a question for you, Lorraine. Shoot. This is from our previous week's, our previous episode's guest. He or she asks, quite simply, <laughs> corn or flour? Oh, boy. In America. Corn or flour in America. Recently, I saw something <laughs> in a science uh, uh, Twitter. You see, Paul, I, uh, I don't know what to call it when it's a Twitter address or whatever. No, it's a science Twitter. You it's got it. It's a science Twitter. And, you know, some young guy, so is a young guy, so i got to believe him, was saying GMOs are not too bad. You know, they've been going on for years and years. Turn of the century, people have been doing GMOs. Turn of which century? Uh, the 19th century. <laughs> but, you know? what, but what was the, what were the modifications being made then as opposed well, to now? Well, any, any kind of, um, you know, grafting, mm -hmm. anything like that yeah. is considered, it constitutes a GMO. Right. So, um, he was saying that uh, they're not so bad. That being said... You know, our wheat and our corn is just trashed, you know. <laughs> right. And there's all sorts of books like Wheat Belly and, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. And that stuff is all true. Mm -hmm. So I'd say neither. Neither? Yeah. And it's terrible because I loves me bread What? And yeah, me cake. sure. Of course. Loves do them you, both. Do you not eat those things or you do eat those things? I don't. I don't. You know, but I eat like gluten-free versions, which sure. are just aggressively bland. Yeah. You know? when, when's the last time you had a regular cake? Oh, boy. I'm like trying to Packed think. with gluten. Well, here's the thing. I have this philosophy where it's like, um, well, I haven't tasted that before. Mm -hmm. Or I found a place where it's like, well, I have knowledge of that, but I must have knowledge of that. So that, that's, that's my, uh, the line that I draw. You know, it's like I know about that C's pop or I, I know about that, you know, Mrs. Fields cookie. I have right. knowledge of that. Right. But if it's like a petty four mm -hmm. that's made, you know, at this place with all these incredible ingredients, I have to have knowledge of that one. Meaning you have to have intimate knowledge of putting it in your mouth, swallowing it. Right. And uh, right. digesting it. One time thing. Having your body converted to fuel. Right. But I pay for it. 
We all pay for it, right? Oh, yeah. It's uh, it, your relationship with uh, bread. When did it change? When did you realize, like, I'm going to do something different? Well, this is, uh, oh, cause this is going to be so boring. <laughs> My husband was not making a certain antibody in his blood. Why not? <sighs> he was just being obstinate. Does he know that marriage is a compromise? It is. It is so hard. <laughs> um, and after all sorts of... Um, uh, methods and, and things that were tried. Uh, a Western doctor said, why don't you give up wheat? Mm -hmm. And it was the only thing that worked. Right. So, and then know, it was fine. In showing solidarity, I did the same thing and felt a lot better. So we've really been kind of off it for two years. That is a difficult thing. When your partner is doing something and then you say, well, I'm going to do that too to help you along. Mm -hmm. It can be very, very difficult because you're also, I, from personal experience, I think my wife and I do this when we've tried to help each other out in this way. You look for the sign of weakness in the other person. <laughs> Come on, baby. Let's have a lost weekend. And they're like, oh, you're having, <laughs> if you're eating, if you're eating cupcakes, I might as well eat cupcakes too. Right. And oh, then, yeah. we'll, then we'll still be together. We'll still be on the same Why page. won't you help me? <laughs> yeah. But I don't miss it. I, or there's so many good products except for bread. Yeah. They've not cracked that code. <laughs> but there's so many. There's good pasta. That it's not corn pasta because that stuff tastes crappy. Yeah. But there's a lot of good products if out you, there. You don't miss it. If you go other places, if you go overseas, do you, would you eat bread there? Well, that's the thing. And that's what I've read. I haven't gone overseas. But I understand that their wheat is fine. Mm -hmm. It's just that ours has been you know, processed to death in order to make it have longevity on the shelf mm -hmm. and resist uh, insects. <laughs> so it's basically garbage. What was, the, what was the bread thing you liked the most when you ate regular old bread? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, there's, uh, may I mention brand names? There's sure, La Brea Bakery. I mean, come on. Absolutely. And then there are certain restaurants that have their own bread that is just fantastic. Yeah. So that's the thing, you know, like sourdough bread and mm -hmm. cheese bread and, oh, Paul, <laughs> oh, God, olive bread, Kalamata olive bread, oh, dear Lord. What do you do for a birthday, for a birthday cake, what would you do? Uh, now? Yeah. Well, if it's Now and then. What, what was your previous Well, here's habit? the thing. I don't like, you know, there's only one birthday cake that I will eat, which is a Hansen's cake, because it's a true buttercream frosting, just, you know, white people cake. <laughs> right. You I know, do no kidding Hansen's. around. Just go straight to it. Where is Hansen's? I don't Hansen's, know that. Hansen's, it's on, uh, well, it's on um, Beverly Drive in Beverly Hills, but their big factories on Fairfax. Uh-huh. Um, and that is really just the main line, just, you know, strap me off and inject main line sugar. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's from my childhood. That's, yeah. that's that flavor, you know, that real, honest to God, white cake with buttercream frosting right. cake. <laughs> and also they let you sample it. Mm -hmm. You can go in and say, well, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to have for the party. Let me try this lemon, uh, lemon filling one with the chocolate frosting and Do so you, on. Are you a person who likes a cake with a fruit filling? Because people are divided on that. There are times. It just depends. <laughs> there are times. There are times. I will make an exception. It's always a shock to me when somebody has that for their wedding. When they yeah. have, that's a bold move. So subjective. Move. Yeah. It's almost, a, you know, it's almost uh, mean. <laughs> exactly. I, I went to a dinner party you once. You might as well have a fucking carrot cake as your wedding cake. Yeah. It's mean. I went to a dinner party and I was hijacked by vegans. The, the <laughs> people who gave the dinner party were vegans mm -hmm. and everything was inedible for me. You know, I mean, vegans use a lot of cumin and I detest cumin. Mm -hmm. And it has a strong personality. I don't care how much you use. I can taste it. And I, li and I was starving, too. Mm -hmm. I couldn't eat anything. What did you do? I left. Because <laughs> I don't care what happens, I'm eating. If I'm hungry, I'm eating, That's and I'm right. out of there. That's Damn right. it. Absolutely. God. <laughs> I went to a wedding. Friends of ours um, got married up in, uh, uh, in wine country in California, and we stayed at this, uh, at this inn that was – they had a vegan kitchen – and uh, my wife and I, it was like a charming uh, looking place. The food was 
absolutely terrible. I have, <laughs> I, have, I have nothing against vegans or veganism. Me neither. Uh, some of my dearest friends. I've I've had plenty of vegan Go food in, in my peace. life. Go in peace. Yes. But this particular place, it was awful. Oh. And so my my wife and I, we had this really disappointing dinner. And then we were in bed. And the room was very cozy. There was a fireplace in the room. And um, uh, so f I don't know why we started reading the Yelp reviews of this place that we were in. And they were hilarious because we could – you could see the the history of the place from when it first opened. And it was like a pet-friendly uh, hotel where you can bring your dogs and cats and stuff. And, the, and <laughs> so the reviews were like the, the dogs and cats don't get along. Like people <laughs> people are bringing all of their pets and it's a big problem. Oh, God. And then they say they have vegetarian options but not very good. And they say they're all green but there's plastic water bottles in the fridges. So we, we like – we traced how <laughs> – they kept uh, refining their approach. But then the very last review, the most recent review, because we're reading them in chronological order, um, said, yeah, they're vegan, but um, I found out that if you ask them to just uh, make you uh, certain things, they'll just make them for you. So like there's – you can go off menu and say, yeah, oh. I just want regular food and then oh. they make it for you. So it's like, well, what is the point of this? Wow. Why is this happening? Well, at least they're flexible. I, That's I good. guess they That's are. That's the best kept secret. You can really <laughs> eat there. But a big part of a big part of veganism and, and vegetarianism is not having the food prepared yes. in the same way. Right, in the vicinity. In the same place. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, they pro that may have been a change. Mm -hmm. You know, they may have had to have adapted to stay in yeah, business. Yeah, because their food is garbage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this whisper campaign of, of letting people know, like, hey, just let people know if they want to get real eggs, they can get them. Yeah, well, they had this philosophy, and in the end, they just wanted to get out alive. <laughs> Do you like weddings? Um, they can be fun, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I mean, I don't drink. Right. And I think a lot of the uh, fun mm -hmm. is um, – fueled by drink i suppose that's true because i don't know if i've ever been oh i have been to a wedding sober i went to a dry wedding one time okay and it was dry in, in every sense mm -hmm. it was a very it was a very uh staid uh reception a very quiet and it's a wedding it was without like a, moisture yeah it was like a big dinner it yeah. was just like a big dinner yeah i mean i can have fun i, I mm -hmm. never drank in my life and i have perfect time mm -hmm. but you know it wouldn't be as long as it is mm -hmm. You know, uh, if it weren't for drink. Yeah. Did you ever try any drinking? Did you ever try I, alcohol? I tried alcohol once when I was 19. Uh huh. Um, I had a particularly bad show at the Groundlings. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, we went to this restaurant called Theodore's, which doesn't exist anymore. And I thought, I'm going to get drunk. And I got a glass of white wine, held my nose, and downed it. <laughs> <laughs> and proceeded to have every symptom of a hangover. Mm -hmm. I was drunk for a while, and I was like, you know, I <laughs> and just, you know, puked. And then uh, had the headache, mm -hmm. the sensitivity to light and sound, and depression, all within a matter of two hours. Mm -hmm. And that was it for me. <laughs> Who needs this? By the time you got home, did you feel okay, or were you still a little shaky? I don't remember. You see, I was 19. Sure. That is probably uh, 53 years ago, 54 <laughs> years ago. So, yeah. And not a drop since. No. Well, I've, here and there, like sips, but, you know, mm -hmm. you could probably fill a glass with two glasses with what I've mm -hmm. had. Are you are you ad adventurous with food? Like, do you, because I'm not a very adventurous eater, but I will I will try things. Yes, I will continue. I make myself try things. I'll try stuff, but there are just cilantro, <laughs> cumin. Mm -hmm. um, those are the things I hate. Right. Are you a seafood person? Yeah. Mm. Sure. Can't get past it. Really? Yeah. 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 Aww. Yeah. I gotta. I I feel like I have to really concentrate to make it happen. I like Aww. have to actually. It's a I, shame. It is a shame because guess what, Lorraine? People love <laughs> seafood. <laughs> and the way, the way people talk about it, yeah. like they are rhapsodic about seafood. Well, I'll tell you, I know you're from Philadelphia. There mm. is some great food in Philadelphia. You go to old original book binders. Yeah, book binders for, <laughs> for sure. Right. And they're, they're clam chowder. Uh huh. Come on. And they're lobster bisque. Come on, you don't like that? That sounds good. Lobster bisque. Those sorts of things sound better to me than just like eat. Oh. 
eating oysters, that's never going to happen. Oh. I, can, I can declare with certainty that's never going to happen. But, Paul, you know, they have this creamy <laughs> consistency and they are all different from creamy. whatever. Creamy. I am telling you. How like, dare you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that creamy. kind of creamy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I get it. It's an acquired taste that I will never I acquire. Know, I know. All right. <laughs> um, so wedding, dry weddings for you, and then does that mean that you leave earlier? It just depends. I mean, if there are people there that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. I mean, Julia Sweeney's wedding mm -hmm. was amazing. It was that restaurant downtown. I think it's Cicada. I've heard is, of it, yeah. It's a beautiful Art Deco building. And Don Novello officiated as Father Guido Sarducci. No, in character? <laughs> yes. He performed the wedding? He performed the wedding. That's insane. And, you know, I was with people that I really liked. And I met new people that I really liked. So, of course... We were, you know, this was a kindred group. So, mm -hmm. of course, we stayed for hours because these were people that we really liked. Yeah. So, it's just a combination of people. Yeah. It's, it's, tough. You, it's, tough, it's tough when you go to a wedding and maybe it's like you and the people you, you – the person you're with and that's kind of it. And yeah, you know you the people that are getting married. Yeah, you don't the of the other people. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Because you're in a foreign country. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like mm, Ohio. <laughs> right. <laughs> Flyover states. Lorraine Newman, thank you so much for being here. It is now thank you. Um, it is October uh, 19th. Is there anything you would like to tell the people about? Anything coming up? Uh, well, I'm on, let's see, three Netflix animated series, but only one is playing right now. The other two are not on yet. Mm, one is, but they're coming. Yes, one is Guillermo del Toro's Troll Hunters which was very exciting for me to be directed by him. <laughs> um, and the other is The Crudes, and the one on right now is Puss in Boots. And um, oh, local stage stuff, a Groundlings show in September. Really fun. Yeah. Um, God, you know, I don't have my calendar in front of me, but That's I'll post right. stuff on Twitter. That's quite all right. And where can people find you online? Uh, LorraineNewman.com. There you go. It's just that simple, guys. Yeah. Lorraine, thank you. Uh, we're going to take a break, and during the break, I will secure from you a location for our improv. Okay. And then when we come back, we will meet our improvisers. All this and nothing else when Spontanea Nation <laughs> returns. Hi, I'm Shimmy Joins, the sleepiest guy in town. And I'm happy to say Spontanea Nation is brought to you by Lisa. Lisa has done away with the awkward mattress showroom experience that we've all suffered through. You know, you're sleepy, it's the middle of the day, you see some mattresses and you're like, bingo, that's where I'm going to go sleep. And then the mattress store people are like, hey, we're trying to sell mattresses, this isn't like, you know, a bed library. And I'm like, that's not a bad idea. And they're like, go take it somewhere else, Shark Tank. And I'm like, I don't think Shark Tank has libraries on there ever. And they're like, what would you know? You thought this was a bed library. And I'm like, touche. Anyway, while I'm awake, I want to tell you that Lisa's created a luxury mattress that is ordered completely online and ships for free to your doorstep, compressed in a box the size of a mini fridge. Here's what's great. Let's say you fall asleep on your doorstep like I always do. You're the first to get it in the mail. Then... You, you fall asleep while you take it out of the box. You can fall asleep in the mini fridge box. There's no mini fridge in there. I feel like I'm confusing things. The 10-inch mattress comes in all sizes and it's crafted with three unique foam layers for cooling support of comfort. And Lisa gives you 100 nights to try your mattress risk-free. I don't like risks. That's why I don't have a driver's license. Because I kept falling asleep at the wheel during my driving lessons. I'm pretty sleepy. And for every 10 they sell, they donate one to a shelter. Lisa does that, not my driving school. Lisa's like the Tom Shoes for mattresses. Every time people buy mattresses, eventually, well, not every time. It's every 10. Every 10 mattresses they sell. Boy, they shouldn't have picked such a sleepy guy to do this ad. Go to leesa.com slash PFT. And if you're still awake 
Enter promo code PFT. I almost fell asleep in the middle of the word promo. It's two little syllables. Let me start again. Go to L-E-E-S-A dot com slash PFT and enter promo code PFT at checkout to get $75 off. This is the longest I've ever been awake. This is Shimmy Join saying... <laughs> oh, now that is what I call an ad. <laughs> Welcome back to Spontanea Nation. Did you go somewhere? Hmm, I didn't. I stayed right here, where I belong. I know my place. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to meet our improvisers. Sitting, we've discussed this before, <laughs> catty corner from me. Although a lot of people say kitty corner. And I don't remember which one I say now. It's like when I try to remember how I pronounce S Y R U P. <laughs> she is coming back to the show. You are seeing her on Drunk History. You have seen her on Go Host Girls. Go Hurls. Go Host Go Hurls. Sports fans may have seen her on the court. Uh, 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 is she getting busted for traveling? No, she's not. She's a real sportsman. Don't even try it. Her name? Well, I'll tell you. It's Maria Blasucci. Hi. Maria, welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been since the last time I've seen you? Good. I went to Sweden. That's right. So, you and our friend Amanda Lund, Amanda Lund uh, you went to Sweden yeah. to do this sort of thing where you work on a farm. We worked farm. on a farm, yeah. But, you know, the big thing that happened was they didn't have any sugar on the farm. They didn't eat any sugar. So it was a real, it was a real trial. <laughs> how? Because do you have to eat sugar every day to live? Because I don't know how not, I don't know how to live without it. I didn't know you had such a sweet tooth. Oh, baby, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you had some sugar today? Uh, yeah. What have you had? <laughs> well, I had. Well, I, I haven't had like a cake, but I had uh, a Luna bar. You know that has oh, some yeah. sugar in it. You have to have some sweet thing. Yes, or else I, it's all I think about. It's all I think about. I, tell, I guess what, Blasuch? I'm very similar. Really? Yes. Like, just give me a little bit. Otherwise, I'll just be freaking out. And so that happened in, in sweet. Amanda and I both have the same problem. And we saw this one little bowl of jelly beans sitting. That was the only <laughs> sugar you, you could put in. Oh, there, the was worst. Four, there was four jelly beans in there. Amanda said, I found it. I found their sugar. It was a sad bowl of four jelly beans. <laughs> I found it. I found the sugar. <laughs> now, I hope you guys were holding flashlights at the time. <laughs> no. I hope this was the dead of night. No. The, the family is asleep. No. And you've broken into their home. And this one time, the mom took out this big, like, looks like a big cookie tin. And I, like, hit Amanda being like, it's like happening. And she opened it. It was, like, all this flat bread. Oh. <laughs> it was, like, a big, it was, like, a big, co like, cracker. It was real hard. A big it cracker. It was really hard. Anyway, now, yeah. now, see, I will. I'm okay if I can get out of the habit of it. Mm -hmm. Then I won't think about it so much. But if I, but it's very easy to get into the habit of like, oh, I just had lunch. I think I need a, a lunch dessert. <laughs> you need something. <laughs> but their butter started to taste like ice cream. They that would is... give us bread and butter, and we would just be eating the. Amanda said this tastes like like ice cream, and then the bread tastes like the cone. Oh, you guys went insane! Is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting across from Maria Blasucci, <laughs> this gentleman you will remember from last week's episode from that was live at Largo. He is my colleague in the Thrilling Adventure Hour. You have also seen him on. Do, I, do you want me to do your credits every time, or are we okay to skip past that? Why do you think I've done those television shows? <laughs> You've seen him on Brooklyn Nine Nine, <laughs> Parks and Recreation, <laughs> and in the movie Twenty Two Jump Street. <laughs> Also, Kings of Summer. I never mentioned Kings of Summer. Yeah. That's a delightful movie, which you should seek oh. out. Seek that movie out, ye seekers. <laughs> what is his name? It is Mark Evan Jackson. Hi, everybody. Mark, welcome back to the program no. from last week. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
Um, I hope that people, listeners to the Spontaneous Nation program, have figured out what that uh, ghostly sound was that ha- happened in the middle of our live recording at Largo. Yes. Now, we are recording this just days after that recording, mm-hmm. this, this current episode, and there was a lot of talk of ghosts. And then, towards the end of the show, there was a very strange noise that seemed like it was some sort of feedback, but it didn't sound like the feedback that we're used to hearing. It wasn't like a ear pit, ear, ear splitting whine, you know, that you're used to if a microphone gets too close to a speaker. It was its own sound. It was very, very strange. And I don't, and I, I'm saying all this because I don't know if it will stick to the recording. I don't know if anyone heard that but us. I wonder. And I will say interestingly about it, it felt like it was an amplified thing, which mm-hmm. is uh, what made it feel like feedback. But I heard it come from Sarah Burns, who was standing right next to me, not from a monitor wedge on the front of the stage and not from the speakers out in the house. You're saying you heard it come from her mouth. I did. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And it freaked me out. She might be a demon. Oh, that's entirely possible. Right. With all that joy she exudes. <laughs> She was dancing like a whirling she dervish to that Joy Division song. <laughs> Mark, I'm done with you. Fine. Sitting, <laughs> sitting next to me, making his Spontaneation debut. This gentleman is my colleague in the Super Ego podcast. He's also my friend in life. He's got his hand on my knee right now, <laughs> the way friends do. Please welcome for the first time. Spontaneous Nation, Mr. Jeremy Carter. Hello. There you are. I'm right here. You're, now, Jeremy, you're very clean shaven. I, uh, yes, I shaved my beard. Mm-hmm. You had my, it going for a while. I did for the my, my Shunt McGuffin beard. Mm-hmm. And then uh, it's interesting about beards is uh, anybody, like women under in their 20s like the beard. Mm. And then nobody else. And guys. <laughs> and then... Uh, my mother and uh, uh, anybody. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Mothers hate beards. Mom did not like the beard. No. She was like, well, th-. and I saw pictures of me with the beard and I thought, well, it looks like it smells like whiskey. <laughs> so, <laughs> And did it smell like it looked? Uh, no, it didn't. It was clean. <laughs> it just looked like I'd been drinking in an alley. Sure. Uh, and then I shaved and then uh, I trimmed my hair a little bit uh, and then missed. And so, oh, you did this yourself, yeah. the hair trim. Yeah, and then I just uh, took all, all of my hair off. And you're wearing a baseball cap. Forever. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you cut your hair in a way that does not grow back. <laughs> no. Nope. Uh, I used a blowtorch, which apparently you're not supposed to do. <laughs> Closes up the follicles. Uh, so just burned it shut. <laughs> burned well, it shut. Well, welcome you and... Your scorched scalp. <laughs> Thank you. Now everyone knows how this works, except for the people that don't. <laughs> so I'm going to explain to them. Uh, just what the fuck is going on? We are going to do her prop now. To aid our storytelling, we use sound effects that move us about in time. If something is happening concurrent with the scene that we are doing. Let's say people are in a room, then outside a room, some other people are talking about something else. Um, We'll cut to those people. And you'll hear a cut to sound effect that sounds like this. Now the button is red. That's like, stop! We're over here now. (laughs) Like red. If someone is having a memory... If we're trying to figure out how something came to be, if something along those lines, uh, we want to go to the past, we're going to hear this flashback sound effect. It is the perfect sound effect for a flashback. I think you'll agree. (laughs) I've had this tested and judged by the Sound Effects Council. Flashback. It's a yellow button. Slows things down, goes backwards. If we wish to return from the flashback into the present or to go into the future, we'll use this flash forward button. See how it ascends? It goes up like time goes up into the future. (laughs) It's green. Flash forward. One of our improvisers is so bored with this explanation, he's checking his phone. And now, (laughs) 
<laughs> it's not that big a room that I can't see everything that's happening in my peripheral vision. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have secured our location from Lorraine Newman, and that location is Vent Haven Ventriloquist Museum, Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. Vent Haven Ventriloquist Museum, Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. We take you now to Vent Haven Ventriloquist Museum. Where is it in Kentucky? Fort Haven. Fort Haven? I believe it's Fort Haven. Oh, Vent Haven and Fort Haven. Sure. Anyway, here we go. So this one here is um, or Michael Jackson. <laughs> and it's... Um, you, you can just, uh, you know, do songs with it. And um, it was on stage a couple. So. You, miss, mm -hmm. yeah, I got a question. Yeah, go right ahead. This just seems to be a lot of dolls in uh, glass cases. Yes, well, it is a ventriloquism museum, and so, therefore, it is dolls, and we protect them in glass. But, I mean, they don't talk or nothing? Well, funny you should ask. <laughs> they do talk, but you need a little magic, and that magic is your hand. Why well, I got to do it? You've got to do it. Uh, I'm also confused. We we paid to get in here, and now you're putting us to work? I, I... Well, actually, it is a museum. Therefore, you cannot touch any of these dolls. What? Oh, what Come is on. this? Oh, uh, this First is, you this say we got to do it, then you say we can't do it? I understand your complaints, and you can <laughs> fill out a complaint card. But I need to tell you guys that my job isn't so easy where I can just open a glass case. I don't have the keys. Now, would I want to open this case and make this little dummy Michael Jackson talk for y'all? Yes, I would. Also, not for nothing, but uh, Michael Jackson dummy, it's kind of in poor taste, right? What's that doing here? What do you mean? You heard about Michael Jackson, he, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, we have some terrible news. <laughs> He's singing. He's a singer. Uh, uh, he was, yeah. He was, yeah. Yeah. He, you, he, yeah, go ahead. No, he's an, was he acting now? or? N no. I, oh, dear. Uh, maybe you should sit down. Yeah. I don't know. Let me get you a glass of water from this machine over here. I don't know how to tell you this. Are, are you going to be okay? I, I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Well, we didn't know him. I mean. I'm so yeah. sorry. What? Are, Not hey. related to him. I just... <laughs> It's kind of common knowledge. I'm so sorry that you had to see this doll. <laughs> this dummy probably brought back memories of his death to you. We, uh, entirely. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, that's what happened. Here, I'm so sorry that this has happened. What I'll do for you is I'll go get the key. I'll open up this box. and The key you said you didn't have access to? I can get it. Wow. I can get it for you. Who's got the key? Trista, welcome into my office. Uh, Boy, it's great. Hey, uh, listen, the new Whitney Houston uh, ventriloquist dummy is, is all ready, so guide him over there. I know we've had a lot of people screaming for Willie Tyler. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's on break. Okay, Gail, I'm so sorry, but I just need that key to that Michael Jackson box. Sure, sure, let me just fish around for it. It's in here some... Wait a minute. This is a museum. You're not supposed to actually handle the ventriloquist dolls. I'm not going to. I was going to clean it. Oh, that's different. Say, why are your eyes all red? What's going on? I've been crying. What have you been crying about? Michael Jordan. What about Michael Jordan? He's... he's dead. What? I... I'm supposed to go play golf with him next Tuesday. She'd been away for a long this time. This is taking longer than anticipated. I'm starting to lose interest. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to be okay? I don't... I just... I, I... Okay, okay, I lied, I lied. Michael Jordan isn't dead. Why, why would you play such a horrible trick on my emotions? Because I was trying to trick you. I need the key to the glass case. I was about to give it to you, and then you <laughs> delivered soul-crushing news. And now to find I have been the butt of a nasty. It is a nasty. It is a nasty. Give me the key, and I promise I'll, I'll explain it all to you. All right. I just It's hard to see. All the keys are the same color and glittery, and, and there's so much tear in my eye. 
<laughs> now, when you want the copies of the keys, do you want them to be all different colors, or...? No okay. way! I've got good vision! <laughs> well... <laughs> at the very least, let me put a coating of glitter on them so that you can find them. Oh, that'd be fantastic! All that right. way, in darkness, I'll be able to see them clearly. Yeah, that was the idea, stupid. Well, thank God you finally found the right key. So I'll be going now, but I will explain it to you all later. <laughs> explain. <laughs> Fine, just take it and go. I'm, I'm recuperating. Oh, there she is. Hey, did you see this? Michael Jordan died. What? Yeah, it just came in on my phone. Okay, here's the key. Great, now we're going to see this Michael Jackson <laughs> puppet get what it deserves. Yeah, I want to see some of this hand magic you've been bragging about. You will not believe. I wait, wait, wait. Is that what we want to see? What? Or is it that we find it distasteful? Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> or did, was it both? You know, I don't know that we ever really uh, got on the same page. I tell you what. We might as well see this Michael Jackson puppet do some puppet stuff mm -hmm. and then have it disposed of properly. Sure. Now, actually, we do not call them puppets. Oh, we boy. call them dummies. Oh. Because... That's what they're called. So, let me just open up That's this. a rock-solid argument. Let me just open up this box right here and go ahead. You can hold them if you'd like. Oh, yeah. Well, it's lighter than I would think, and then other parts are very heavy. Huh. <laughs> which so parts I, are light and which parts are heavy? Well, the bottom appears to be weighted, and then the, the head feels, uh... Oh, look at that. I can, uh, I can make his mouth move. Absolutely. Now try this. Make his mouth move with and, and speak. But without moving your lips. <laughs> How's, that's not possible. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, well, you can't talk and not move your lips. How that's, is that? uh, that's, whole, that's part of big part of talking. Okay, let me try it. Uh-huh. 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 What do you say? Uh-huh. What is that, Liberian girl? Yes. <laughs> yeah, see, he knew. I'm a natural. Hey, let me try that. Here you go. All right. Careful, the bottom's very heavy. See, ooh, it is heavy. Yeah. <laughs> I would think the head would be yeah, heavier. Yeah, I know. Because the legs are just kind of dangly. Yeah. I would think they would just, yeah. But they, the shoes are uh, very authentic and very, uh, they're very heavy. Yeah. All right, here we go. Just get it right in there. All right, what, what do I want? Did I leave a see? ring in there? <laughs> oh, is that what this is? Yes. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. I didn't know you were married, by the way. Yeah, news to me. <laughs> Get on All with right. the show. All right. Hey, wow. hey, take it easy, everybody. Excuse me, did you pay to be in? You cannot just just latch on to a tour group that is going on. I had a, a group on. Oh, da oh darn it. <laughs> All right, let me just uh, try this here. <clears throat> I can see your mouth moving. I may have even said anything yet. I can see it, too. Well, I'm not saying anything. Are you talking about right now when I'm talking now? It's not yeah. very good. It's obvious. Uh, but I'm not even, I haven't even tried yet. It now I'm just talking as myself. It oh, okay. doesn't even sound like Michael Jackson. No, I'm not trying to sound like Michael Jackson. I'm just I'm just talking right well, now. Well, that sounded like him right there. Uh, what? <laughs> what yeah, are you talking about? That was about? good. He actually had a rough, deep voice. Hey, why don't you get closer if you're going <laughs> to be so critical? Well, I was, I, I was standing back because I was late to the program. <laughs> My grandson's going to be joining us, too. Part of the grandson? Fun. Okay. Leonard. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Linda. Oh, okay, Linda. We, we like the L-I sound. I'm sorry, family. but I need to put this back in the box before my superior Gail gets in here. Hold and on see a second, hold on a second. We're doing introductions. Let's oh, be polite. Um, this is Linda. Oh, I, I, but Linda came in late to the tour, <laughs> and you're telling me Leonard's going to be in here, and I don't even know him. Well, you're about to know him. Anyway, my name is Chaz. <laughs> and this here is Richt. It's nice to meet you, Chaz and Richt. That's correct. That's R I C T. Very, <laughs> very interesting. It's short for Richted. Mm -hmm. And your name, young lady? My name is. It's. <laughs> Trista. That's right. That's my husband's name. <laughs> Are you sure it's not Tristan? And they... Oh, it's Trista. <laughs> All right, I'm He's... so sorry. Now, I'll let y'all have your introductions, but if I don't get this Michael Jackson back in the box, my butt's going to be on the cutting board. Oh, I don't Whoa. think you understand, Trista. This puppet is never going back in that box. Yeah, it's a symbol of hate, and it doesn't belong in a museum? 
What? You're going to steal the you, Michael Jackson puppet? And by puppet, I mean dummy? We're going to dispose of it properly. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I cannot have we're that. We're going to put it up on a flagpole. No, no. I can't. Well, you gotta, that's what you're going to get. So out of the way, Trista. Ow, my arms. <laughs> <laughs> this puppet is going up a flagpole where it belongs. Hey, you guys. Put me down. What? You... Guys, am I crazy? <laughs> or did that Michael Jackson puppet just start talking by itself? We're going to find out what is going on here when Spontaneous Nation returns. Hi, everybody. It's Paul F. Tompkins from Comedy Bang Bang. I wanted to tell you about Spontaneous Nation Live happening Saturday, November 7th at the world-famous Largo at the Coronet in West Hollywood. If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area on Saturday, November 7th. You have got to come to this show. Our improvisers include Craig Kakowski, Chris Tallman, and Jean Villapique. Yeah, some Spontaneous Nation all-stars. And our special interview guest is Keegan Michael Key. It don't get much better than that, in my humble opinion. Not using internet slang, but saying all the words out loud. As always, there will be something a little special that happens only for the live audience that the podcast listener will not get to see. Sorry, podcast listener. Uh, and we got something fun planned this time. Uh, last time I sang the uh, Kanye West, uh, Rihanna, Sir Paul McCartney song, four or five seconds with uh, former Bengal Susanna Hoffs. What? Yes. See, this show is fun. And listen, there will be a meet and greet after the show with me, Eben, some or all of the cast saying hello, shaking hands. Uh, we'll have posters by Nathan Diffie, the guy who does all the live posters, and he does artwork for every episode that comes out. Check out his work on our Facebook page. These posters are always amazing. He is a brilliant guy, and you should hire him for your graphic needs. Um, you should just have somebody in your life named Diffie. It's fun. And as always, my pledge to you, the Spontaneous Nation Live Pledge, free stickers. For tickets, go to pauleftompkins.com slash live. Go to pauleftompkins.com slash live to see tickets to see tickets on sale that you could buy. <laughs> it gets interactive after you see them. Come see Craig Kakowski, Chris Tallman, Gene Villapique, and Keegan Michael Key, and of course, Evan Schletter, live and in person. Pauleftompkins.com slash live. Yeah. You guys better put me down. Oh my god. I've never seen it do this before. I thought you said it required a hand inside of it. It does. I, I've never seen anything like it. There's nothing like me. I'm a Michael Jackson my trucker's dummy. But I've got the life. Was there lightning? I don't understand. I mean, usually there's lightning or, or, or something. I, I didn't see any lightning. Did you, Linda? No, I'm, I was busy looking over my shoulder for my grandson, Leonard. Well, I don't understand. So if this is if this is the case with Michael Jackson, is this is it possible that every ventriloquist dummy in the museum could could have this life? And we've been keeping them. Oh God, we've been keeping these, keeping them in boxes. No, stop, no Rick! Holes. Stop! It's oh, not your oh, fault. It's you don't even work who here. Who have we become? Please, no more tears. I, when I came in, I walked by an office with a closed door with a sobbing man inside. Gail. <laughs> I mean, God, why would she do it? Uh, 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 I'm supposed uh, to vacuum in here? Oh, yeah, just, but not over there. That's that's actually uh, okay. matcha powder. Okay, uh, there are keys all over this floor. Should I? I don't know which one lets the mutt dummies out of the case. I suppose if what you're saying is true, that all of these dummies can come to life, that we should let them all out of the cages. Just think of <laughs> think of all the museums in all the world. What if all those things? What if the people in every painting are trapped within it? Or Abraham I, Lincoln's stovepipe hat. What have we done? Are you talking about the movie Night at the Museum? <laughs> Michael, you've seen that movie? I know of all movies. I love I was an avid moviegoer in life. Wait a minute, that's my son Leonard's favorite movie. He sounds like Grant. a pretty sounds like a pretty cool kid. I, that might not sound great coming from me. Why not, Michael? Oh, 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 she doesn't know. She's missed out on a lot. Oh boy. So 
I'm not proud of it. But uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Tristan, it's really not you who needs I'm to apologize. So sorry. This, is, this is the nicest reaction I've ever gotten. Yeah. About this. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you're getting an undue amount of empathy in this. Tristan, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. I am so sorry. You didn't do it. I didn't know either. I just because I don't really read the news. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't hear about this at all. No, I just. I mean, the last. I guess. Well, I, it's I, all rumors anyway. It's not true. So. Uh, did you know you? What's did, that? Did you know you passed on? Yeah. Oh. It was oh, well, sad. Okay. That's, uh... So I'm just a little confused. Mm. Is you the real Michael Jackson in there, <laughs> or is you a ventriloquist dummy? Yeah, which is you? <laughs> is I is or is I ain't the real Michael Jackson? Well, let me tell you something. I think I used to be just a regular ventriloquist dummy. And then, that guy who's the manager of the museum, every night, he, he opens up the cases and he hugs all the dummies and he cries and cries and cries. And I think he must have got me wet after midnight. <laughs> and now I'm Michael Jackson. That's what it takes, getting wet after midnight brings you to life? I mean, that's my guess. Well, let's open up these cages and wet them all. <laughs> Come on, tell me. But not until tonight, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Wait, yeah, it's like it's <laughs> it's, all, it's quarter after four. We got I got a hit of myself. I'm so sorry. Trista, Trista. Oh, here he is. I, oh, I didn't realize you still had a tour. What's Michael Jackson doing out of the case? Hi, Gail. Hi, Michael. <laughs> well, he just he doesn't seem phased at all. <laughs> It's almost like you knew that this doll could... Gail, did you know that dolls can come to life after midnight if you wet them? <laughs> With your tears? All right, shut up. Yeah, look. That's why I started the museum. I collected these dolls and realized that my tears could bring them back to life. Wait a second. Back to life? <laughs> did, they, did we all used to be alive? A lot of them are made out of uh, mummies. What? You, you started this museum? Yeah. You're Gail Van Haven? That's right. Wow. Of, of the Kentucky of, Van Haven? Of the Kentucky Van Havens, that's correct. My father was a congressman. Of course. <laughs> Bill Phil Van Haven. Bill Phil Van Haven? Bill Phil. Everyone knows Everybody him. Everybody knew Bill Phil. God, he was a good guy. Big gregarious fella. Had Fire plug of a man. What was he like? Oh, you just said kind of said. <laughs> Uh, yeah, good to see everyone. It's uh, me, Bill Phil Venhaven. No, uh, the uh, the table recognizes the overweight uh, uh, representative from the home state that we all are all home from. Uh, <laughs> good to be home Kentucky. from Kentucky once again. Now listen, you all know me. I'm a plain speaker, a straight shooter, a smoker, a joker, and a midnight toker. <laughs> Here's what I want to do. I want to establish a bunch of museums here at Fort Haven. I want them all over the place, all different kinds of things. Oh, sure. Uh, probably natural history, science. That That's a bunch of bullshit. Who wants to <laughs> see a woolly mammoth? I'm talking about bobbleheads. Action figures. Uh, I don't know, ventriloquist dummies. What ventriloquist about, dummies? What about spoons? Can we have a spoon museum as well? Well, are they state spoons with a state seal on them? That's the only kind of spoon I'm interested <laughs> well, in. Well, brother, you've got my vote. I'm Great. a congressman. <laughs> I'd look at you, but my neck is palsied. <laughs> How'd you get a palsied neck? Now I'm going to inject you with this and... Without having tested it, I have no expectation of the result. Oh, doctor, please, I don't think you should. Really? No, no, let the doctor do his work. I got to be able to survive that hanging. <laughs> <laughs> and survive that hanging you did, you son of a bitch. Boy, I sure did. I just lost some of the mobility. <laughs> he sounds like a real good guy. He was. God damn it, he was great. I remember once for Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, you sons of bitch kids! 
I hey. love all of you. Oh, boy, you're the best. Yeah, yeah. I know I am. I'm larger than life. Thanks. What? You're the best. You're just, <laughs> Thanks. You you're are. just plain spoken and a real straight shooter, Dad. Look, all I want to do is just tell you how it is. It's fucking Christmas and Merry Christmas. You all get toys. God damn it. Merry God Christmas. damn us, everyone. <laughs> And that year, I got a Willie Talk and a Charlie McCarthy for Christmas. Hmm. A Willie Talk? Like Willie Tyler and Lester? Y uh, yeah. Or is it different? Willie uh, Talk's different. He's a little, uh... Willie's the ventriloquist. Willie's the... And Lester's the dummy. Wait, which? Yeah, it's Willie Tyler and Lester. Usually the one who doesn't have a last name is the dummy. <laughs> Not in this case, friend. <laughs> All right, well, was... Michael, Gale... It seems like you two have quite a history together. Now, how long has this been going on? Do you want to tell her or should I? One of you has to, because you're the only two who know. <laughs> Unless we good... wet all these other dummies and ask them. Well, that's why I was making my round. Okay, look, um, Michael and I went to the Grand Canyon a couple years ago. <laughs> what do you mean? All right, uh, just keep this on your windshield, and you're you're free to, free to drive. Oh, it's just you and a some kind of. That's right. It's Michael Jackson, the ventriloquist dummy. I don't remember. Made that. out of mummies. Sure. That's, uh, <laughs> anyway, no uh, no fires down in the lowlands. Uh, only propane heat. So that the rocks don't catch fire. Are you meeting anybody later? Or... Are you coming on to me, friend? Have a safe trip in the park. Thanks a lot. Let me just lift this gate. Do you think he could tell I'm alive? <laughs> well, I think the way you were looking at him might have given a little bit away. <laughs> I was just doing a classic ventriloquist dummy, eyes shifting back and forth. <laughs> like on that Twilight Zone episode. Yeah, mouth opening and closing wordlessly. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, burrow ride? <laughs> Let's do this. That's a great story. And we skied. <laughs> All right, here are your lift tickets. Uh, one for yourself, obviously, and then... <coughs> what was that? Well, we're going to get it on the cheap, we, if we only have to pay for one. Oh, good thinking. Yeah. Okay. So just attach that just to me. This, your zipper. Just me. And then this uh, backpack. Oh, that's not a backpack at all. Well, kind of. Okay. That's... I keep my hand in it sometimes. <laughs> I don't remember asking about that. The rest is history. I lost my foot to frostbite. You'd think even though it's not a real foot. All right, look, I've had enough of this. This has gotten too weird. So have I. So have Rick. I'm on your page. I'm still here, too, by the way. Of course. Well, where, what have you been? Yeah, Chess. I was rather interested myself. Where is Leonard? Where is Leonard? <laughs> look, I, I'm going to, I want to see through what I came here to do which is not at all what I arrived needing to do, but since I've arrived, I've realized that we need to set these guys free and at the risk of seeming insensitive, put them, all of them up flagpoles and light those flagpoles on fire. Why do you want to do Good that? Point. What? If you want, if they are alive and they have been caged their entire lives, why do you want to have them suffer? I just want to put them out of my misery. Out of your misery? What happened? Now, it seems like something happened with your marriage. <laughs> That's a bold... Jump to me. <laughs> okay, fine. I still love you, and I will wear the ring, but... Can I stop calling you doctor now? And I'm... my husband when we're not in the room? Oh, this again. Just because I don't have any sort of college degree. You don't! And you... Oh, so that's reason enough well, not for you to Well, you've been people with things for years! Years! Yeah. Science is about experimentation. <laughs> Read a book. Oh, how rich, to me, how rich, I'm Rick, Rick, the rich man. <laughs> yeah, someday, once I get a, a real doctorate. Get out of here. What? Get out. I'm keeping this ring. And that's why I, uh, that's why I keep the ring, even though it's very loose and I leave it places. <laughs> well, at least you retain the moral high ground. I feel good about it. Even though you're a guy who went around injecting people with no medical license whatsoever, I think you're, I stand with you on this uh, dummy issue. Looking back on it, I think a lot of those people trusted me because I introduced myself as doctor and wore a lab coat and stethoscope. <laughs> there you go. And I was going to ask about the lab coat, but now it's all perfectly clear. Yeah. 
Well, I tell you, once you slip into one of these things, it, it fits this, it's like this glove. You, <laughs> <laughs> you never want to take it off. Can I have a hit of that? <laughs> sure. That's a good looking flask. Mm. Hey, uh, so I got all these glittery keys. What do you say we let these little devils out? What do you say, Michael? Yeah, do it. Why don't we start with this John Wayne Gacy puppet? <laughs> I don't see the harm. <laughs> all right, I lock it. Wow, there are more in here than, than met the eye. This is a this is a big group now. Who's left? Uh, Donald Sutherland. <laughs> Not a very popular puppet. <laughs> who was the? I forget who was the ventriloquist that had the Donald Sutherland puppet. <laughs> welcome everyone. Welcome to Crackers. Your headliner tonight. <laughs> yeah, we're going right to that. I know I just welcome you to the club, but uh, the MC and the middle are not here yet. Get so to it. yeah, we're getting to it. We're gonna bring on your headlining act for tonight. Please welcome. <laughs> Toronto Joe and his little wooden buddy, Donald Sutherland. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Toronto Joe. <laughs> and I'm Donald Sutherland. <laughs> uh, how's everybody doing tonight? Uh, we just uh, we just arrived via rail. Uh, I, yeah, the, and I rode in on a Sherman tank. Aren't there supposed to be jokes? Uh, this is harder than it looks. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why we're not doing it. <laughs> Couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, but you're doing it, so do it. You're really handling that heckler. All right. Uh, so try this one out for size. Uh, we were recently in a supermarket. Went to our grocer's freezer case. I asked the grocer himself. I said to him, Oh, is this freezer door open? That's not Donald Sutherland. <laughs> That's who it was. That's right. It was that guy that had this Toronto <laughs> He, he should have stuck it out. Yeah. I think he need, just needed to find his voice, no pun intended. We yeah. reach our, we, we've reached a, a moral dilemma. Either we let the world know that every puppet and doll has always been alive, or <laughs> or I guess I live in this museum now. Is it, hold on a second. Is it every puppet and doll? I haven't been paying attention. <laughs> I thought it was just the dolls in this museum. It's the dolls in this museum <clears throat> because... They're made out of I've wept. I've wept on them. And you Beca cried on Yeah, them. because there's there are certain tears. Am I wrong on that? After midnight? After midnight, there's tears on them. Technically after <laughs> six, but yeah, midnight, depending on the time zone. Oh, after six. Hey, well, it's after midnight somewhere. 20, 20 to <laughs> All right, Michael, you calm down. You calm down. He's sassy. That's why I take him places. <laughs> I'm just trying to have a good time. I know, Michael. That's really the only thing I'm really guilty of. Well, it's some other stuff that we discussed. All right, well, I mean, I'm, I'm resigned at this point. Whatever y'all want to do. You're resigning, but you're my only tour guide. No, not resigning the job. This, oh. is, this, is my only, this is my only paycheck, my only form of joy. Oh, good. I shall never leave here, Gail. Because I'm not good at public speaking, Trista. I know that, Gail. I know that. Are we about to discover a secret love we've always had for each other, even though I'm 56? Ooh, that didn't go so well. Uh, wow, she was I'm not. Sorry, well, I wasn't leading to it. He saw it. What he, he saw what he needed to say. <laughs> yeah, he's crying again. <gasps> get a, get the dolls under him. Get the dolls under him. <laughs> Here, here's Charles Manson. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry, Chuck. You. Oh God. Here's Vivica A. Fox. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes me feel a little better and weird. Against my better judgment, here's Osama bin Laden. <laughs> I don't know why I bought this one. I don't know why I bought it. There seems to be a 90-10 on the theme of the dolls in this museum. Well, we've had a lot of fun, haven't we? Hey, guys. Yes, Michael I want, Jackson? I want, to, I want to make this easy for you. I'm going to lead all my puppet pals out of here. Where? We're going to go up some flagpoles. Do it ourselves. You're gonna do it yourselves? But why, yeah. Michael? Why? I don't think this is the way things are supposed to be. Bully, I'm behind you 100% of the way. Uh oh. Who, I'm. Who's that? I'm Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> From Night of the Museum! <laughs> A Night of the Museum 2 battle for the Smithsonian? That's right. Or was that the third one? 
It do, have it there been really three? Wasn't. It don't matter. I, think I don't remember if there have been three. There's three, right? Yeah. Oh, there's, there's the, at least three. There's the first one. Then there's the one with Hank Azaria's uh, <laughs> King Tut. And he's doing like, not King Tut. He's doing like a mummy. And he's doing like a Boris Karloff voice, which is like, that's a pretty clever thing. You Boris really are in the movies. Very funny. I love movies. I love them. I love them. Does it have a... <laughs> Does it have a story arc is it of three all the three movies? Nope. Where it sure doesn't. I see. Pretty standard Hollywood sequel stuff. <laughs> I mean, you know, the problem is you got a movie that's like a standalone thing, like that <laughs> museum, and then you have your character has his uh, his issues. You know, Ben's still a character, and then it's all resolved at the end of the movie. So then next movie, you're he trying to have retrofit. A Excuse me, my voice is so scary. <laughs> Oh, this is little Richard. Uh, little Richard took over for him. Little Richard Vincent. Woo! <laughs> well, I invented movies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess if y'all are gonna go up the flagpole, we we should lead you out there. I'll lead the charge, or yeah. you can. I, no, 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 I don't no, want I, to. No, I not... don't want to, Teddy. Trust him. It's best that the Teddy Roosevelt puppet does it. I understand. Hey. Somebody do it. I need to get some sugar. Where do you? <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt, would you say you fall under the heading of <laughs> villain of history or uh, pop culture celebrity? Hmm, I would say both. That's I'm, right. I'm very active on Twitter. <laughs> uh, my vines uh, have over 40 million views. <laughs> You're a vine superstar! <laughs> yeah, I'm a vine superstar. <laughs> uh, a lot of people don't know a lot about my past, so uh, now I'm just kicking it. I'm just finding you shooting bears and shit. <laughs> Wait a second. Falling on a skateboard. This isn't my ring. Huh? Michael Jackson. Yeah. I need my ring back if I'm ever going to win back the love of my wife. All right, but I should tell you, if I give you this ring back, we're all just going to return to just being old puppets. Maybe, maybe... Well, it's not much of a... Because you're either going to die on a flagpole... Yeah, exactly. ...or go back to being puppets. We're either going to be sentient puppets that die on a flagpole. That, that's horrible, by the way. We burned <laughs> it alive. It was your idea. <laughs> it wasn't my idea. But you went along with I it. Mean, I mean, for the greater good, you know? <laughs> that's what Michael Jackson's all about. I know. Oh, really? <laughs> well, I Is mean... Is that so? Do you not remember the story? Thing? There's a couple other things, I guess. <laughs> but look, given the choice between... Burning alive, or quote unquote alive, or becoming a just a regular old non sentient puppet. I guess I'd rather just be a puppet. Yeah, it sounds good to me. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna listen. reach inside you now. I need you to. I need you to promise me. What? You're gonna take this ring and you're gonna make things right with your wife. We'll see. Maybe get an act. We'll see. <laughs> what kind of a deal is this? I promise to investigate it. <laughs> man, I'm going to give man. it the scientific method. Oh, Boy, no wonder she dumped you. Look, the jury's out on that, all right? Here, I'm reaching inside you, Michael hey. Jackson. Ow. Okay, there we are. Ooh, this is, the feet are heavier than it looks. The well, head is remarkably low. Oh, there it is. Because the right. sequence sewn onto my socks. Now I'm going <laughs> to remove my hand. All right. You ready for this? Any last words, Michael Jackson, ventriloquist dummy? <sighs> Yeah, I got something to say. Just real quick. Oh, yeah. Is, what, what was the ring doing that it was going to keep you alive and he's taking the ring now? There was a ring inside me that was cursed. Okay. And we, then I that's the ring I let him take out. Okay. And then he realized, unfortunately, that that was the ring. Rings are it. Rings are circular. Got it. Yes, okay. absolutely. Sorry, go ahead. You yeah, were going to yeah. say something. No, I didn't catch that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. So rings are made of precious metal. <laughs> And our uh, oh, got it. I'm up to speed. Yeah, okay, good. Did you not know what rings were? I didn't. That? I've never been married officially. Oh, all right. Mm, not hard to believe. What do you mean? Ricked. <laughs> Rift. What? Ricked. Ricked. Oh, hi, Ricked. I'm Gail. Michael Jackson, it's getting hot inside you. Can I? <laughs> can you get to your? Yeah. Let me just say this. Really quick. I. I, I <laughs> I want everybody to know that we had some pamphlets, new new pamphlets made up for the museum. Those were nice. Okay, can I do this? I'm, time will tell. All right. I guess I go now. <laughs> Off to Neverland. Not the Neverland of J.M. Barry's wonderful book, Peter Pan. But a never, 
but a land where I'm never alive and have no more thoughts. People will gaze at me behind a screen of plexiglass and say, Ooh, Michael Jackson. <laughs> That's a weird choice. <laughs> but I won't hear them. Because I'm just going to be a hunk of wood. Goodbye, Earth. Goodbye to everyone. I'm sorry about all the stuff I did. It wasn't polite. Okay. All right. Ugh. Wow. Hi, Aunt Linda! <laughs> Lennon! It's Lennon! Well, there you are. Were you in the bathroom? I had a problem. <laughs> well, you Ew, look at all these dolls. Yeah, they're just laying around on the floor. I want a hot dog. <laughs> all right. <laughs> what a little Leonard. kid. Leonard. Boy, have we got a story for you. I love stories. Heavily edited in some parts because of the characters involved. Is that Michael Jackson? Oh, well, I guess you're all <laughs> caught up. <laughs> and you're caught up. Well, there we go. It all happened at the Vent Haven Ventriloquist Dummy Museum in Fort Haven, Kentucky. Jeremy Carter, where can people find you online? They can find me on Twitter at shuntmcguppin. No, just sh at shunt. <laughs> I'm good at plugs. Shuntmcguppin. Twitter. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> Do you ever wish that you had used your your name instead of a character name? Yes. The thing is, there was a motocross uh, Jeremy Carter. Really? Who died about 15 years ago. A motocross related uh, I think things? so. I think so. Oh. <laughs> so. Shunt McGuffin. <laughs> <laughs> and what would you like to promote? This is October 19th we're talking about. Oh, well, uh, I don't have anything coming up. I guess by the Shunt McGuffin. Bad Honky EP. There you go. Where can yeah. people find it? They can find it on iTunes, or they can find it on that one thing, Bandcamp. 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 Go to Bandcamp. And like Shunt McGuppin's Facebook fan page, and enjoy the holy shit out of Super Ego. Who's on that Shunt McGuppin album? Anybody I know? Uh, you probably wouldn't know him. Paul F. Tompkins. What? Is That's on me. What? Oh. I'm on it. Aaron Hayes is on What? It? She's been on this show. She's wonderful. Who else? Who else is on there? Matt Gorley. What? He's also been on this show. I know. Isn't it wild? It's probably the end, right? Nobody else? Dan Franklin? Mark McConville plays. What? Mark uh, McConville. He's been on the show, he's too. He's been on this show, too. Dan Franklin's not been on the show. Dan Franklin's and not been on the show. never will be. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as I have breath in my body. <laughs> Mark Evan Jackson. Hello. Oh, Savannah Georgia. Where? Savannah Georgia. <laughs> Where can people find you online? People can find me uh, at Mark Evan Jackson. M A R C E V A N J A C K S O N. And what would you like to tell people about? I'd like to tell people to uh, check out uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine on Fox on Sundays, and also the Detroit Creativity Project. It's a nonprofit that uh, some Detroit expats living and working in Hollywood have started to give back to the city of Detroit. We teach middle and high school students to improvise because it's super duper fun and it uh, offers you a lot of confidence and self-esteem and some good life skills. So please check it out at DetroitCreativityProject.org. Wonderful. Blasooch! That's me. Where can people find you online? I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. M underscore. <laughs> underscore. I'm, there was an M Blasucci already taken. Who and was it? Who was this other M Blasucci? There's another Maria Blasucci who no. lives in Italy. No. She lives oh, in, in Italy. Italy! Did she do motocross? <laughs> <laughs> it's M underscore B-L-A-S-U-C-C-I. And, uh... I don't know. So remember, that is Munderscore Masucci. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And do you want to plug that uh, jail farm you worked at overseas? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sugar jail? <laughs> um, no, no. It was fun. It was, it was a lot of fun. Well, it was, it's called woofing, and anyone who wants... Don't, no, don't. Mark saying no. Mark, don't. I'm Mark. not going. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an organization where you can go work on a farm. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Um, and pistol shrimps are are they in season right now? Uh, yes. N yes. October. Yes. Uh, mid, uh, mid to late October. Yeah, we're 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 dribbling down the courts. <laughs> You're tearing it up. And uh, drunk history is on right now. That's right. So Sweet. Check that out. Um, Paul, I don't know if your episode's been on yet. I do not know. 
But I will find it out. It's quite funny. Keep looking if it hasn't, because it's very funny. You talk about the uh, Moulin Rouge in Las Vegas. That's right. The first integrated casino in Las Vegas. Mm. It's very and interesting. And I got very, uh, very drunk. But you looked <laughs> handsome doing it. Thank you. Well, I hope I remain handsome to the end <laughs> of my life. Evan Schletter is at Evan Schletter on Twitter. Go to EvanSchletter.com where you will find his uh, record albums for sale and you should buy them because Evan Schletter is only the best. And for me, No You Shut Up is coming back to television. We have a fourth season uh, that is going to debut uh, February 4th, 2016. But first, we're doing a couple specials to hype up the new season, uh, to uh, remind people of what the show is all about, and to introduce some new segments and People? Yeah, that's right. That's what I said. November 5th and November 12th. Those are both Thursdays. November 5th and November 12th on Fusion. Catch up on our previous seasons on YouTube and on Hulu. Uh, We have full episodes that you can view there. Uh, You don't need to (laughs) catch up in order to watch any of this stuff, but there's a lot of good comedy that is uh, awaiting you uh, online and, and probably crying ones and zeros. Spontaneous Nation Live happens again Saturday, November 7th. We have had so much fun doing these shows. Um, please do come out and see them live. If you come out and see it live, there's special stuff just for the live audience that the uh, podcast audience doesn't get. Sorry, podcast audience, but you get this shit for free. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> please leave that in. Oh, I'm sorry. I had to clear my throat. Um, you can buy tickets to the show at paullftompkins.com slash live. Please rate us on uh, the various platforms where podcasts are rated. It helps people find the show uh, and it keeps our profile visible. Um, and you can donate to the show if you would like to uh, help keep Earwolf going and help keep the podcast free. Uh, and also let Earwolf know that people like Spontaneous Nation. Uh, there's a donation uh, link at the bottom of our Earwolf page. And you can go there and join the forums and talk to like-minded people about the show. And it's a lot of fun. Thank you to Engineer Sam, his maiden voyage on Spontaneous Nation. Thank you, Engineer Sam, for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in Presenti! Hello, podcast listeners. Now that your program has ended, why not listen to the best podcast in the universe? Improv for Humans. Oh, welcome to Improv for Humans with Matt Besser, that's me! Improv of legend Matt Besser and his friends. Take your suggestions. Three of the best improvisers in the world will be improvising off your suggestions given to me at Twitter, newspaper articles, we're gonna crap on YouTube. And turn them into long form improv comedy. Hello, nine one one. What? What? What's your emergency? Uh, look, I, I am being, I am being, I am being harassed by my bank. Hold on a second. First, I need you to pick a sight key picture. Oh, Jesus! Uh, you can pick a boat. You can pick a candy cane. You can pick a pumpkin. I'll take the boat. Pick, I will take the uh, boat. Please listen to all the options first, sir. You can pick a block of cheese, or you can pick a wheel of cheese. Is the. Uh, um... I'm sorry, I'll sir. Take, that you only had you only had five God seconds. Damn it! You only had five seconds. God the police cannot it. help you. Listen to Improv for Humans on iTunes, Earwolf.com, Howl, or your favorite podcast app. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Adam Sachs, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com. 